Angela with the Chicago Architecture Center back for another episode of Architecture Essentials. Now, you might notice that my surroundings look a little bit different than they normally do. Um, I'm not outside talking about skyscrapers and historic buildings. I'm not in one of our galleries at the Chicago Architecture Center. I'm not even in our design studio. I'm actually in a kitchen. So this is actually where you're gonna do your project today and your workshop today is in your kitchen. So I have some materials here that I wanna to talk to you about and walk you through. The first thing that I uh, have here is a pepper. And I don't care what color pepper it is, green, red, yellow, orange, doesn't matter to me. Um, you can also use something, uh, if you don't have a pepper at home, you can use a different fruit or vegetable. Um, but I'll explain to you a little bit later as to why a pepper is, is the best choice. But work with whatever you have. Besides a pepper, I also have a cutting board. I have a knife uh, to use later with the pepper. Make sure that you have somebody close by, an adult or somebody that's um, able to help you if you need help um, using a knife. I also have a piece of paper here. It's I have an 11 by 17 sheet of paper, um, but you can use a piece of printer paper or whatever you happen to have at home. Also a pencil, like a sketching pencil or a number two pencil would be really super helpful. Or colored pencils if you want to be a little bit uh, creative and add some color to this project. So the title of our workshop today is called Drawing a Pepper in Sections. And you might be asking yourself, how does a pepper translate to architecture? Like, it doesn't even make any sense, right? Well, I'm gonna to explain to you why it is important and why we are gonna talk about peppers in architecture. So when draftspeople or architects uh, design a set of construction documents, um, they are looking at structures and buildings from many different angles, right? They're not just looking at a building from one angle, they're looking at it from all over. And they have to be able to communicate their ideas to the contractor, right? The construction foreman, the people who are actually building the structures, um, they have to be very clear about what their ideas are as they translate them into a set of construction documents. Um, another person that they need to communicate with is the city when they're taking out building permits and also their client who's paying for, for this structure to be built. So, we're going to illustrate this a little bit more simply than diving deep into a complete set of construction documents. And we're gonna use a green pepper in order to do it. Now, the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to take your piece of paper and I'm gonna have you fold it. The first way I'm going to have you fold it is what I would call hamburger style. Do you use that same sort of uh, terminology where you live, hamburger and hot dog style? So I'm gonna have you fold it hamburger style, and don't put a, a solid crease in the side, just kind of lightly press, okay? You don't need to put a hard crease, just kind of lightly press if you'd like to. Once you've done that, I want you to open it back up and I want you to fold it lengthwise, the opposite way, or what I would call hot dog style, right? And do the same thing, kind of lightly crease, lightly press, all right? So that when you open it up, you have four equal boxes on your paper, okay? Now, with your drafting pencil or your colored pencil, in the top left-hand corner of your paper, I want you to write the word floor plan view. Floor plan view, okay? Now, a floor plan view when we're talking about documents and, and what uh, is drafted in a set of documents in its most simple, most basic terms is sort of a bird's eye view. So if you imagine yourself as a bird flying over the city or flying over a neighborhood, and if you were to remove the roof off of one of those structures and look down and see all of the walls sort of divided up and where all of the fixtures are, kind of looking down from the top in a floor plan view or a bird's eye view. Now, when we think about construction documents, usually a floor plan view is the thing that comes to mind. It's the thing that we see the most often um, because it outlines all of the different rooms and spaces, right? So if we were to look at our pepper, what is the floor plan view of this pepper? It'd be the top, right? 
So in that box that you labeled floor plan, I want you to try to sketch the top of this pepper in that first box. Now, if you were sitting through a full class with us at the CAC, we would dive into drawing and drafting this pepper in scale, um, which is actually a class and a workshop that we're gonna offer very soon. So stay tuned to learn more about drawing items uh, and, and structures in scale. But for right now, I just want you to just sketch the top of this pepper in that first box. Go ahead. All right, how did that go for you? So you were able to sketch a pepper in floor plan view. And remember, that's sort of like a bird's eye view in a set of documents. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk to you about is actually called elevation view, elevation view. And an elevation really is very basic, is the front or the side. It's what uh, an architect or a designer would call a facade. So like kind of the front part or the side part. Um, if you think about standing on the street in front of the place that you live and looking at the front of your of the structure that you live in, whether it's a house or an apartment or whatever, um, that is the elevation. It's the front, right? It's the side. It's, it's looking at it from, um, from like a flat surface side. Now, the interesting thing about elevations are they're able to communicate some things to us that a floor plan wouldn't be able to. So think about it. Look at this image, this illustration of an elevation and tell me what it's showing that a floor plan couldn't. It's showing us details as to where the windows are placed, right? And how far off the ground the windows are. It's showing us where the door is, what materials are on the outside, right? Now, one of my favorite uh, illustrations comes right out of our curriculum of uh, Schoolyards to Skylines and the Architecture Handbook, which is this image here. It's basically showing a structure, a courtyard building that we see very often here in Chicago, but it's showing the elevation version of it. And really the elevation looks like we took the building and sort of just smashed it all together. Everything is on the same plane. There's no depth, there's no dimension to it. Everything has been kind of crushed or flattened out um, so that we can see the whole facade of the entire U-shape or courtyard building. Kind of interesting, right? So I'm going to give you a few minutes, and again, I want you to think about the elevation of your pepper, and I want you to sketch it in the next box. Go ahead.
All right, welcome back. So we've now learned about floor plan view, we've learned about elevation view, and now we're gonna learn about a third type of, of view that we use in construction documents. And this is where your knife comes into play. So if you need to pause for just a moment to grab someone to help you use the knife properly, I would encourage you to do that. Once you're ready, we're gonna get started. So we talked about floor plan elevation, and the third one that I'm, the third view that I'm gonna to talk to you about is actually called a section view. So in your third box, I want you to write the word section at the top, okay? And with your knife, I want you to cut, or if you're the adult that's helping, just cut right down the middle of the pepper so that it's in two equal pieces, okay? Now, the pepper really illustrates why we uh, recommend using something like a pepper for this activity, because a pepper is really unique where you can see there's holes and there's voids and there's different textures. There's a lot going on on the inside of a pepper, right? So in just a minute, I'm gonna have you sketch out the section view of this green pepper in that third box. But before we do that, I wanna ask you, why is it important to look at a section of a structure? Why do d designers and, and architects even use this? Well, the reason that they use it is really so that they can see the different layers of the structure all in one view. So if you imagine a giant knife cutting a structure or maybe cutting um, like the building that you live in right in half like a big giant cake and opening it up, you can see all the layers, right? You can see between floors, you can see that maybe in your house or in the building that you live in, maybe all the bathrooms line up, right? Because they're using the same plumbing stack um, for, for each of the units that you live in or each of the bathrooms that are in your home, right? So it's important for, uh, for us to be able to see section views because it really communicates a different, um, a different conversation about the structure that we can't have in a floor plan view or an elevation view. So take a few minutes and I want you to sketch the section view in that third box. Go ahead. Right, welcome back. So we've got one more box to sketch in, right? And we have one more view to talk about. Now, I want you to put on your artist hat for just a moment because we're going to talk about a view called perspective. Perspective. Sometimes I've heard this even called isometric, depending on which way and what, um, what vantage point you're looking at. Uh, when you're doing this particular exercise, but for today, we're gonna call it a perspective view. Now, if you look at this image here, what is this perspective view of this structure communicating that maybe the other images couldn't? You see a little bit more of a fuller illustration of a project, right? But there's no dimensions on this, there's no measurements on it, right? There aren't rooms or, or materials that are labeled. So why is a view like this so important to communicate ideas? Well, put yourself in the position of someone who's maybe building a building or building a new home. Would it be easier for you to understand a picture that looks like this versus construction documents. 
Maybe, right? You're able to be a little bit more creative. Maybe this is really helpful in communicating to someone like a landscape architect on where you want certain things placed or flowers or how you want the outside and the sidewalk to look, right? So I'm going to give you just a few minutes and I want you to sketch in perspective view, just kind of set your, pe your pepper, excuse me, aside and kind of analyze it and look at it almost in like a 3D view. And I want you to sketch in that fourth box the perspective view of your pepper. Go ahead. All right, welcome back. How did that go for you? So we've learned about four different views that draftspeople and architects and engineers use when designing projects. We've learned about floor plan view, elevation view, section, and perspective view. So the next time you look at a set of construction documents or you see a sketch of something, I want you to try to see and try to understand why they chose to design or why they chose to communicate in that way. Also, it's really fun to get online and look at different floor plans that people have created and posted online. Um, of course, make sure that you're using uh, a parent or some a, a trusted adult's um, information when, when searching and going online to look for these things. Um, but I encourage you to kind of surf around and see if you can read and decode different kinds of construction documents and see what the designer is trying to communicate. We'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.